Wow. Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and Merry Christmas. Welcome to this year's Christmas Day extravaganza. Now this year, since last year's Christmas Day video went so well, we're going to do the exact same thing this year. Today we're going to take a look at every single vintage computer I currently own in this place. It's going to probably be the longest video I have ever, ever made. So, um, stay patient, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Welcome to the Nostalgia Mall Christmas 2018 Christmas Day Extravaganza. Okay, we're going to start off our Christmas extravaganza with the iMac G3. Now, this is a computer that I acquired this year, back in February, I believe it was, um, from the same fella that gave me the Packard Bell Legend 204 CD, which we'll be looking at a little bit later in the video. Now, this is a computer um, I don't use a whole lot. Um, it just mainly sits in the corner, um, unplugged, um, awaiting um, further experimentations and tinkery. This um, iMac has a 333 megahertz G3 processor. It originally had, I believe, 64 megs of RAM, but I upgraded it to like 196 megs or something, something in that general area. And it originally had a 6 gigabyte hard drive, but I upgraded it to a 15 gigabyte hard drive. These iMacs are surprisingly somewhat simple to take apart. Um, only if you're intending to replace the hard drive or the memory. Um, if you're going to do anything further than that, it would probably be a little bit more difficult. But um, This iMac, um, I got the computer and the hockey puck mouse. Keyboard um, that you're seeing right here is not original to this system. Um, I bought this at a Goodwill a couple months ago. It's in terrible shape. Color doesn't exactly match, but it's good enough for this. Um, because I had been using one of the more modern chiclet style Apple keyboards with this. Um, one problem this computer has is the optical drive, um, last I checked, is not functional. So when we power this up, we probably won't be playing too many computer games on here, unfortunately. But we'll tinker about with whatever is currently installed on it. So, um... Without further ado, let's go ahead and power it on. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> ourselves a bong. Sometimes this iMac, um, sometimes it'll um, cut back off at that point. This computer has some kind of electrical issue in it, uh, so it might not last much longer, but oh well. <laughs> Booting into Mac OS 9.2. This can run um, the earlier versions of OS 10, but I prefer to run older Mac OS on here because it's a little bit more retro and runs more retro software on here. And plus, it just runs better on an older system like this. I think this is the first time this um, iMac has been powered up since October, when I last did a video about it. <laughs> so yeah, this computer, it really doesn't get a whole lot of use. <laughs> There's my custom Apple wallpaper. Clock is about an hour ahead, but that's just because I haven't powered it up since daylight savings time ended. Not the fastest hard drive in the world. I may consider at some point putting a compact flash or a SD card in its place, but I really don't use this computer enough to for that to really matter. Um, uh, quick time error there, but um, the PRAM battery has been replaced. The one that came with it was obviously dead, but I stuck a new one in there, which was pretty simple to replace, and it's keeping all of its settings and time just fine. So let me pre-position the camera, and we'll take a closer look. Okay. Close out of that. Uh, sorry for the flickering. I really don't have a way to adjust the refresh rate on this screen. 
go to about this computer running Mac OS 9.2.2 160 megabytes of RAM so I was um, pretty close let me go to the system profiler <coughs> again I still don't have much experience with um, with Apple computers um, old and new so as I've said before in videos about this computer I'll probably say and do things that will make you cringe because I've been using Windows since 1995, so that's where my uh, experience lies. PowerPC G3 clocked at 333 megahertz. I have I have used these iMacs um, when they were new um, back in 1998. The library in my elementary school upgraded to these. They had a great big circular table um, with a whole bunch of iMacs on them on it. Can't remember if they were all different colors, um, but I do know that one of them was a Bondi blue color like this one, which is my preferred color. Apple USB keyboard. Oh, I shouldn't have clicked that, <laughs> but it's okay. Alright, let's see what we can run on here. Again, we can't use any CDs. Um, I've got After Dark 9 on here, but the only screensaver I have is Starry Night. If I put other um, uh, modules on there for After Dark, for some reason it'll um, say there's not enough memory to run the screensaver and we and after dark crashed that's that's lovely um let's go to macintosh hd got apple works 5 formerly known as claris works This is um, kind of like Microsoft Works in a way. Type a little message. Don't save. Alright, let's, uh, I did try to install at ease on here, but it wouldn't install for some reason. Flintstones Fun Pack, um, does this require the CD? Yes, it does, so, forget that. <laughs> that is a game from my childhood, by the way, that I do want to show sometime. We've got um, my utilities. And um, a virtual PC. I actually have a uh, Windows 98 virtual machine on here. <laughs> so we can load that up. Oh yeah, for some reason, um, <coughs> some reason I got switched down to 256 colors. Okay. There we go. This probably will take a while to load. <laughs> Before Macs were Intel based and um, you could boot camp it to run Windows on a Mac natively, this is what you had to do to run Windows on a Mac. You had to do it in Virtual PC. And this is the Kinectix version of um, Virtual PC, which was later um, bought out by Microsoft. 
which is the version I know a little bit more better. I grammar good, don't I? <laughs> and <laughs> we can even do nasty little things like this. <laughs> Some people, that's kind of disgusting. I'll go ahead and close that. Um, we're not even going to shut it down safely. <laughs> now, with this, we always have to play with um, a Macintosh. This is a game that. I played quite a bit on the Macs at school. Little word munchers. Uh, I tell you, I spend so much time having to adjust the uh, the display settings on here. It's not even funny. Here we go. Spewed all over my wife. I just realized there's little Santa hats on those um, word muncher icons. Somehow um, I messed that up. <laughs> oh, I think I died. <laughs> I know I died. Okay, enough of that. Huh, high score. Not that I care. <laughs> okay. Anything else um, before I can uh, shut this down? Oh yeah, kid picks. Played this quite a bit on the ones at school. And played it on my PC at home as well. I'm such an artist, aren't I? Look like a log. And we'll close up shop with this. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, and we'll go ahead and shut her down and move on to the next computer and our extravaganza. So, um, stand by for computer number two. Okay, the next computer we're going to look at is, well, one of my uh, favorites. This is another computer that I got this year. This is the Gateway 2000 P590. And the reason I bought this computer is, as you've heard the story so many times on this channel, my um, first computer experience was with a Gateway 2000 that looked just like this. It was my aunt's Gateway 2000 P5100XL. 
I was introduced to it in, I believe, the summer of 1995 at the age of five years old. Had a lot of good times on that computer, and um, it pretty much um, helped shape who I am today when it comes to um, computers. She still has the computer, um, I'm very glad to say, and not only does she still have it, it still works. And I wanted to get my own version of this because, I, well, a lot of you have asked me before why I don't, why I just don't ask my aunt for her Gateway 2000. Well, she still uses it quite a bit, and I don't want to take it away from her. She still loves it. She still plays all her favorite computer games on it because she has similar taste as I do when it comes to computer games from the 90s. And she still loves the heck out of it, and I can't take that away from her. <laughs> so instead, I went out and bought my own version of it, the P590. This one's about a year older than hers. This one dates from August of 1994. Has a, a 90 MHz Pentium in it, Socket 5. Originally had, um, I believe, 16 megs of RAM, but I upgraded it to 32. It originally had a 1.2 gigabyte hard drive, but it now runs off of two 2 gigabyte CF cards, one for Windows 3.1 and one for Windows 95, and it has a 15 gig hard drive for um, game storage. When I bought this computer back in March of this year, its motherboard came with a dead Dallas clock chip for um, the CMOS battery. And as you may be aware, these things are a pain to replace. So, I decided to um, get some help from my dad to replace the battery with a new one. And um, in the process of um, desoldering and resoldering the new one, we destroyed the motherboard completely. So, thankfully, my good friend Dolstude1 on he here on YouTube... Um, offered to repair the motherboard. Unfortunately, he was unable to repair the motherboard, but he was able to find an identical one on eBay, and he was able to replace the battery on it, and he sent it back to me, and the computer now works perfectly with the um, new Dallas clock chip. And even He even put a socket on it, so whenever this one inevitably dies, I can easily replace it, assuming they still make them um, when it does die. Um, what else is there to say about the exterior? Um, well, let's just take a quick little tour of the outside off the tripod and we'll see what we got. I think it's safe to say this is the um, greatest computer acquisition that I had in 2018. It's quite simple. <laughs> there it is. Uh, ain't she a beaut? I originally had this in my bedroom, but a, about a month or two ago I moved it out here, so um, I would have an excuse to use it a little bit more. And this thing is enormous. <laughs> it's a tank. But um, I don't know if you can see in the back there or not. And it was built August 4th of 1994. So this is probably the oldest computer I have in my collection as of right now. So, without further ado, let's power her on. She's alive! Get over to my uh, monitor setup here. Booting into MS DOS six point twenty two, and there we go. Um, these speakers right here um, did not come with this computer, this particular one, but these are the uh, the same model that would have come with it. I know my aunt's gateway has the exact same ones. They're 
Altec Lansing Multimedia Speakers from the mid-90s. Um, a lot of people had these back in the day. Anyway, let me uh, adjust the tripod. Oh, and this is the uh, keyboard that I'm using with this computer and the other computers that are KVM'd here to this setup. It's a tiny little um, cherry keyboard. <laughs> I don't know if you were able to see that or not. And this is the monitor I'm using with this setup. Yes, I know it's kind of sacrilege to be using an LCD on this computer, but with the way my office out here is set up, I just don't have the room to have a CRT right here. I would love to, but it's just not its just not possible. So I compromised, and I went with a more modern LCD monitor, but one that was still um, a beige color, so it still kind of matches the uh, the atmosphere I'm going for. So, um, one of these thing, one of the things that this computer is has always been really good at is DOS gaming. Um, this is a perfect computer to play all your favorite DOS games on. It has a um, two megabyte uh, ATI Mach 64 video card, which was quite a powerful card in 1994. My aunt's gateway has the same card, by the way, and it's got a Sound Blaster 16 in it. Pretty much the most standard sound card you could put in one of these, but it works perfectly. So let's go to our uh, games directory and see what we can play today. Uh, let's see. Here's a game that we've um, never played before on this channel. And it's one that um, I just recently started playing. I found out about this game through Phil's Computer Lab, um, Prince of Persia. From 1990. Some pretty good speakers, by the way, on here. It's uh, not letting me do anything with the keyboard. Why is that? Did my computer die? Because none of the lock keys are registering. And usually I can skip through this. Okay, for whatever reason, the Prince of Persia game did not like the keyboard on this computer, so we'll have to save that for another day. But I think we can um, try another one, and I'm not sure if I've tried it on this computer before. Fire and Ice. We'll use the keyboard, VGA, Sound Blaster, and... Uh, yeah, whatever that is. Figure the ice portion of this game would be appropriate for this time of year. And I got my Sidewinder 3D Pro connected here to this computer. Okay, we got a calibrate it apparently. Move your joystick to the bottom right and press fire. Center the joystick. Press fire. Hopefully I did that right. I remember trying this game once, and that kept happening. <laughs> okay, you um, go up to jump. I believe this game was really popular on the Amiga, and actually better on the Amiga from what I understand.
but I'm just glad we got a game that works. Of course, it doesn't help that I'm just absolutely um, terrible at it. <laughs> and it's game over time, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it really drives, drives home the fact that you failed <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> I will give it one more try. Since I kind of understand the controls a little bit better now. Was that bird taking a crap on me? That's disgusting! Ugh, and I already... Yeah, it, this is one of those games where you get, you get hit once, you're dead. So, yeah, not very forgiving. Oh, I see. You freeze him and then jump on him. I guess that makes sense. Okay, we gotta jump up these. Oh, yeah. Destruction. Always a fun concept. go. Yeah, I'm starting to get the hang of it, kind of, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, it's not that bad of a game, I must say. It's definitely, um, more forgiving than Jazz Jack Rabbit Holiday Hair 98. I'll never forgive that game for what it did to me. <laughs> Yay, points! By the way, if you haven't checked out um, The Flying Scotsman's Christmas yet, um, he's been doing um, something very similar to. Uh, my videos here, and if you ask me, they're just as good, if not better, than these, so, um, once you're done watching, um, this, head over to his channel. Ugh. We might not make it through this portion here. doesn't help that there's not really any power-ups in this game. At least not yet. Yep, that's my dog. Okay, that might kill us. Okay, or not. But that will kill us. Yeah, I think that's as far as we're going to get today in um, Fire and Ice. Well, at least we got a high score. Now, how do we get out? Oh, like that. <laughs> okay, now let's head into Windows. We stick back. This was the first version of Windows I ever used, Windows 3.11 on my Ants Gateway 2000. And we'll boot someday. Oh, uh, it, it has to load the network stuff. Um, yes, this computer does have a network card in it. So, in theory, you can browse the internet on this computer. Not that I would recommend it. Uh, sometimes i got to adjust the monitor, though. I don't know why it's... 
like that. Hold on. Okay, I had to manually adjust it, but it should be okay now. So let's um, check out what I've got on um, this Windows install. Got plenty of games to choose from here. We may take a look at one a little bit later. Got Microsoft Office on here, 4.3, I believe. And Works 3.0. And we even got Microsoft Bob, the Gateway 2000 edition. And um, we've even got the Gateway 2000 P590 Technical Reference Guide. And there it is right there. <laughs> and this computer game came in two form factors. Um, a desktop case or the tower case, which we've got. All the original specs. System basics. Presenting your online guide, System Basics. When you see one of these pink dots, you can move the cursor to it and read more. Give it a try. And we can choose between either the desktop or the tower. We've got the tower, so we'll go with it. And this pretty much just tells you what everything is. Um, 3.5 inch floppy drive, CD-ROM, the system key lock. Yes, this computer has a key lock on it, but I don't have the key for it. Thankfully, it is in the unlock position already. And we can um, play a quick game, I suppose. What would you like to play today? Hmm. Well, um, how about a living books game? You grab the CD for that and we'll get started. Okay, this is a game that I used to play on my Ants Gateway 2000, so it's appropriate to be playing it on this one. Just Grandma and Me, starring Little Critter. Just Grandma and Me by Marissa Mayer. Hi, I'm Little Critter. Welcome to Living Books. To have the story read to you, press this button. To play and type the story, press this button. Let's be honest here. Who in the world ever clicked the read to me button? We know everyone always did the let me play. <laughs> okay. We went to the beach. Just grandma and me. Speaking of the beach, um, weird segue there, but um, there's talk right now in my family about us possibly visiting the beach this coming summer in 2019, which um, I am definitely okay with. I haven't been to the beach since 2009, and we're going to be going to Curie Beach in North Carolina, my favorite vacation spot. And if we go, you better believe there will be plenty of video footage from that trip. So anyway, um, let's stay in the now by clicking on my favorite part, of this page. Hey Grandma, you're getting a little too excited there. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah, 
Grandma. I am. You know what's interesting? Um, Grandma is voiced by a man. <laughs> does a pretty, he does a pretty good job as a woman, though. Are you excited? Yeah, Grandma, I am. And Little Critter is voiced by um, his son. Funny enough. Oh, exciting. Not. Hey, this is a game from the 90s. We've got to say not all the time, as much as we can. <laughs> Gee, Bullwinkle, what am I doing in a 90s computer game for children? Gee, I don't know, Rocky. Well, that was a terrible impression. <clears throat> Stupid climate change. Can I sit by the window? You may, if there's room, dear. And there wasn't room. There never was room. One more page I want to look at. This is one of the most inf infamous scenes of this game. If you want to play inside a certain page, click on the arrow. Okay. Head over to page four. I bought hot dogs for Grandma and me. But they fell in the sand. So I washed them off. Kids, if you're watching this video, never ever clean your hot dogs off in ocean water. Ugh. If your hot dog sounds like a potato chip when you're eating it, it's time to go eat something else. <laughs> That's me every day, lady. Good, good, good. Food, food, food. Good, good, good. Food, food, food. Clever advertising there. Yep, that's my dog. Anyway, let's head out of here. And um, that's a good shortcut, by the way, if you want to get out of a Living Books game real quick. Just hit Alt-F4. Okay, um, we need to keep this video going, so um, we're going to sign out of Windows 3.1, and we're going to switch over to the um, Windows 95 install I have for this computer, located on this CF card. And I've got this um, Windows 95 installed to uh, automatically go to this boot menu, that way I have an easy way to go straight to a command prompt to play DOS games on if the need arises. But we already played DOS games earlier, so let's head straight into Windows 95, the, my favorite operating system of all time. It was the first one I ever owned. Go ahead and log on to my uh, server there. And this is Windows 95 in all its beauty. <coughs> Got the uh, 
office shortcut bar up there for Office 95. find something to tinker with on here we can do a quick little MIDI test I suppose let's go to my Christmas Carol folder let's see Okay, um, that's just your basic FM synthesis, but that's all I need on a computer like this. It sounds good to me. So, um, I suppose we should play one more game on this computer. Find a good one, and I think I know of a good one. Hold on. Okay, we're going to play us a little bit of Sonic CD. This was the first Sonic the Hedgehog game I ever played, and it's a really good one if you ask me. Let's uh, tell it to use the joystick and go into full screen. Hopefully it should play alright on a 90 megahertz Pentium. Yeah, the first game I ever played with Sonic the Hedgehog and it was on Windows 95 back in 1996 before I even had a game console or even knew what Sega was the game's got good music too and as you know this game was ori originally released on the Sega CD Aww. playing just fine on this computer. The cool thing about this game is, if it'll let me, we can travel through time. Which is what we usually do in these videos anyway. <laughs> I think we're going to the pass now. So hopefully we um, don't prevent my own birth. That would be awkward.
Okay, let's um, head on out of there. And before we shut this computer down, we'll take a quick look at the system properties. This is Windows 95 OSR2. There's our ATI Mach 64. Got a 3Com Etherlink Ethernet card. And our Sound Blaster 16. And this is the um, the, the Sound Blaster 16 Vibra, the one that gets people in trouble for even thinking of it because apparently it's a piece of junk compared to the real Sound Blaster 16, but you know what? I don't care. It sounds okay to me. So, um, let's head on to our next computer, shall we? Okay, right here is a computer that we got familiar with recently. This is the Carolina Flyer. The original version of this was built last August of 2017, but it's gone through many iterations since then, and it's currently on a new one. We're running off of a Intel Socket 370 motherboard with a Intel Pentium 3 clocked at a 866 megahertz, 256 megs of RAM, and good old-fashioned Windows 98 Second Edition. And, um, in fact, the second video of Nostalgia Mall Christmas this year was me upgrading the uh, motherboard to the Socket 370 board. And um, if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check that out so you, you can see this being put all together. And so far, um, I've had it for about two or three weeks, and it's still running just fine. Um, on the exterior here, we've got a, um, a open case which I absolutely love because um, when it comes to these older custom-built systems from this era, usually they are the most boring, generic-looking cases you can think of. And I like my um, vintage computer cases to have a little bit of pizzazz to them. And what's nice about this one, this comes from the mid-2000s, I believe. This one is still retro-looking. But it also has this really nice blue um, accent around it, which I really, really love. So it's retro, but it's not too boring looking, and that's why I really like this case. It has um, dual optical drives on here. We've got a DVD-ROM right here and a CDRW drive right there. And you can't really see it, but we've got a Scotland sticker on the side, thanks to the Flying Scotsman. And we got a very dirty looking um, Zip 100 drive plugged up via USB. So, um, yeah, this is my main Windows 98 rig. And what's nice about this computer is I have it configured in a way where I can play um, many, many computer games made within a 10 year period from the early 90s to the early 2000s. Um, the sound card in this is a um, PCI Yamaha base card um, that we did a video about recently. It um, it allows for um, the playing of DOS games that sound um, like they should. And um, it also works perfectly with all the Windows stuff as well. So, yeah, this computer is designed to pretty much play everything retro when it comes to the PC games. So let's go ahead and power her up. And I gotta switch KBM inputs. And the power on self test on this computer is instantaneous, which is really, really cool. I always have to install plus the plus pack on Windows 98. It's just a requirement for myself. Oh, and we're um, running off of a 64 gigabyte SD card in place of a hard drive. And Windows itself usually boots up pretty quick as well. And we're running at 1024 by 768. Log on to the network. Why is it getting hung up there? Oh, there we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And I always have to use the NT4 startup sound on Windows 98 just because, um, you know, I've never really cared for NT4 as an operating system, but it had a good startup and shutdown sound, so I like to copy it over to my 98 installs when I can. All right, let's check out our system properties. We've got a um, Intel Pentium 3, 256 megs of RAM. Our video card is a is a little bit controversial, I guess. It's a NVIDIA GeForce 4 MX440. I believe it's got like either 32 or 64 megs of um, video memory. So this video card can pretty much play anything you throw at it from the um, 90s and the early 2000s and that's one of the reasons why I went with it and yes it is AGP and it has onboard Ethernet on the uh, motherboard so I didn't need to put my own PCI card in there which is nice and our sound card is a Yamaha DS-XG I found out about this card through Phil's computer lab who did a great review of this card um, it as I mentioned earlier, um, despite it being a more modern PCI sound card, it does perfectly with many, many DOS games, and the um, and it has good FM synthesis in um, DOS games, which is um, definitely worth the price of admission. Because when it comes to DOS games, I like them to sound authentic. And all our chipset goodies here. Um. I've got the uh, Kernel X on here, which allows you to run um, a few programs that were um, not designed for Windows 98, but designed for stuff like XP, including VLC Media Player. This is a, a version from um, just a couple of years ago, I think. And as you can see, it barely works. <laughs> but it's, it's there as proof of concept, I suppose. And I've got Office 2002 on here with Word 2002. This was the, uh, I used Word 2002 so much uh, as a teenager. And I got plenty of software installed on here. In fact, how much space am I using? See, I got two partitions on the 64 gig SD card. Um, one for uh, the OS and programs, and another to store my game files, documents, and other goodies. And on the main OS partition, we're using 6 gigabytes out of 19.5, um, so not too bad. So let's um, load up a game, see if we can find a good one. We have already played um, a DOS game, a uh, Windows 95 game and a Windows 3.1 game, so let's find something a little bit more powerful that's um, more appropriate for Windows 98. Um, can this run without a CD? No, it can't. Okay, um, the cool thing about this computer is I have Damien Tools installed on here, which allows me to use ISO images which I have on here somewhere this is a game that um, I found out about a few years ago via the Flying Scotsman Croc 2 I believe this was originally intended for the Sony PlayStation and I just realized I don't have a game pad cooked up to this so this may get a little um, interesting Is it going to load? Okay, apparently it doesn't like this computer. And I don't know why. <laughs> Again, this stuff always has to wait till I'm recording a video to uh, start crashing and burning. So, um, oh, I, we 
we can, uh, what's it doing now? It's, uh, doing something, look like. Okay, I guess not. <laughs> now, here's a game from my childhood that I used to play on our Windows 98 machine growing up. Good old Lego Island. I think I remember playing this on the 822 growing up, but not often because it was a the that computer was a little too outdated for this game. Hello. Hola. I don't Thanks think it's, it's supposed to be Konnichiwa. doing that. Aloha. How you doing? Yo, and in any language, whip. Go away, you um creature from another dimension. So yeah, maybe we need to adjust something here. Okay, it's not going to open up the configuration program, apparently. I guess this computer just doesn't want to play computer games today. That's, uh, discouraging. Okay, apparently we're not playing Lego Island on this computer, but we'll save it for uh, another computer that we'll be looking at later in this video. But instead, I guess we can play another game um, that's from the 98 era. We've always played um, Earthworm Jim on here. The Earthworm Jim Special Edition, which is based off the original Earthworm Jim. But there was never really a good release of Earthworm Jim 2 for the PC. There was a version for DOS, but it wasn't really um, made all that well. But what they did have was um, Earthworm Jim 3 on the PC. Or as um, it's really called, Earthworm Jim 3D. Which is what we're going to be looking at right now. Assuming it works, that is. Um, with our luck, it'll probably cause six-foot flames to shoot out of this computer. There we go. Turn it up as high as it'll go. Now this game, I will say, while it's not that bad of a game, compared to the original Earthworm Jim, it doesn't hold a candle to it. Yeah, apparently Earthworm Jim is in his deathbed. <laughs> and what we've got and Elvis is there. <laughs> for my good friend Dylan, that's for you. So we gotta go inside Earthworm Jim's mind. <laughs> It's a really big one! In this game, Earthworm Jim is voiced by Dan Castellaneta, who voiced him in the animated series. And if that name sounds familiar, where he well, he's also the guy that voices Homer Simpson. So yeah, Earthworm Jim is being voiced by Homer Simpson. Let that sink in. <laughs> well, so far, this game is playing just fine on here. Not. Oh, yeah! To be fair, you know, I've been playing this game since, uh, I guess 1999, 2000, and I've never made it past the first level. I think I remember playing it on the Nintendo 64 as a rental from Blockbuster. That's for you, Jay. Whether you accept it or not, that's your decision. Hey. 
chosen worm. Well, by the way, um, if you're expecting a big broody to pop out any minute, well, um, sorry, he's not going to. Big broody is not in this game. And that's one of the reasons why this game is not nearly as good as the original. It doesn't have big broody. <laughs> It's a farmyard out there. I think any computer game or video game can be made 100% um, better with the inclusion of Big Broody. That's just my personal opinion. It got a little choppy there for some reason. See, it's your typical 3D platformer of the late 90s. <coughs> this game isn't bad, but it's not good either. Oh, that's just animal abuse. PETA, if you're watching this video, I apologize. since I played this game, so... Uh... Atomic! Here, I'm supposed to jump on that button. original Earthworm Jim, you launch a cow, and this one you launch refrigerators. Not as glamorous as you ask me. Yes, those barrels can't hurt us. Ow! As you just saw. <laughs> okay, we gotta find a, a chicken's underwear. Never thought I would ever use those words in a sentence. Ow! Quit getting hurt. <laughs> Okay, you know what, um, let's uh, head out of here because um, we're going to run out of time otherwise. So before we um, go to another computer, let's just do a quick MIDI test on this computer because um, this computer, while it has um, FM synthesis and DOS, this this um, sound card has really good sounding um, software wavetable um, elsewhere.
Okay, and just real quick, I do want to show um, a DOS game running on here. Just a real quick one, and then we'll um, head on to another computer. Sky Road's Christmas special, as you, which, as you can um, tell, sounds perfect. Sounds exactly like it should. And this is on a PCI sound card, folks. So yeah, the nice thing about this computer is, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, it does a really good job of playing most games from the early 90s to the early 2000s. It's pretty much a good all-purpose computer. You can play all your DOS games, your 3.1 games, your 95 games, and your 98 games. Alright, let's shut this computer down and move over to our next um, subject. Okay, this is another computer I acquired this year. This is the Dell Dimension 8200. This was originally my aunt's daily driver computer. This replaced her Gateway 2000 back in 2001. And this was her main computer until 2008 when she replaced it with this XPS 720 right here. This computer has a 2 GHz um, Intel Pentium 4 um, Willamette has 512 megs of RD RAM which is um, a pain to upgrade has a DVD ROM and a DVD um, not, uh, no it has a DVD ROM and a CDRW which are dual optical drives three and a half inch floppy drive and an 80 gigabyte hard drive and um, this computer originally came with um, Windows XP but because I have this computer running Windows XP a lot better than this computer would this computer is now my main Windows 2000 computer, which is really, really cool. And it's also dual booted with Windows ME, but I rarely ever use that. And it surprisingly does run Windows ME pretty well. Although, again, I haven't really used it enough to really be a, give a true judgment on that. So, let's um, power this one up and see what it's all about. And I did make a full review of this computer um, a couple of months ago. If you want to check that out. And you can see right here my uh, dual boot. I got 2000 and ME on there, but we're just going to look at 2000. Again, Windows 2000 is an operating system I mostly missed out on when it was still current. A lot of people absolutely adore the heck out of this operating system, and I can see why. It's really good, but I just don't have any nostalgia for it because I never had access to it until 2008. Takes a little bit for it to boot up. NT4 startup sound again, just because I like it. And my mouse is not working. Stupid KVM switch. Okay, mouse is working now. Just had to reboot it. But this is Windows 2000 Professional running the unofficial Service Pack 5 with a special update to let me run some newer um, versions of programs that are designed for XP. Got an Intel Pentium 4, 2 GHz. 
go into our device manager video card is a um, NVIDIA GeForce 3 Ti 500 with 64 megs of video memory got a 3Com Etherlink card which is original to the system and our sound card is a really really nice um, Turtle Beach Santa Cruz um, sound card which is original to the system back in 2010 when I had to, to um, reformat and reinstall Windows XP on here I had a heck of a time getting the sound card drivers for the system but thankfully when I got this computer um, to use as my own this year uh, my aunt gave me the original installation CD for that sound card so installing the drivers was no big deal at all and we can do a quick little um, MIDI test on here as well and the MIDI sounds really good on here Oh, there it is. <laughs> eh, that's not the one I wanted. And um, as you can imagine, since this is a newer um, sound card, um, it's really not all that good for playing DOS games like the uh, sound card in the Carolina Flyer was, but DOS gaming is not what this computer was built for, so that's no big deal. So, um, we can play um, a quick game on here. Um, just let me get my controller moved over to this computer and we'll fire one up. Okay, I've also got Damien Tools installed on here. So we'll load our uh, disk image. And I don't have it on here. I need to prepare for these videos better, you know? Okay, let's give this a try here. I've shown this game before a few times, but this is the um, Back to the Future mod for um, GTA Vice City. This is version 0.2E from 2008. There was a version that came out in 2015, but it's very, very buggy and I can barely get it to work on anything. And um, surprisingly, this game works just fine on this computer, um, despite it being Windows 2000. and. Um, this game coming out a couple of years after this computer. So we'll uh, start off with this one here and do a little bit more time traveling. Um, we did it a little bit in um, Sonic CD, <laughs> so we might as well do some real time traveling now. Load up Mr. Fusion. And set our destination time to my favorite Christmas. And, uh, yeah, this controls can be a little bit confusing at times. Like, I wasn't supposed to get out of the car there. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What button do I have to press? I wonder. Oh, yeah. December 25th. Nineteen... Ninety 
four. And, uh, 8 a.m. Alright, let's head back in time. Nineteen ninety four, here we come. It seems to play just fine on this computer. Again, this is running a um, GeForce 3, which was a really good card for the time. I have considered um, upgrading this computer to a FX5200, but I haven't made up my mind if I want to do that or not. Because um, of all my vintage computers here, this one usually gets used the least. Okay, that's some an, that gets the point across, I do believe. So, um, let's head over to uh, another vintage computer. Okay, this one is one of my favorites, and it's probably one of your favorites as well. This is the Packard Bell Multimedia D132. This was one of Packard Bell's um, various computers that they use that use the corner desktop design. This was the um, the design that was made to um, fit into to corners, which um, this one's kind of in a corner, I guess. This computer has been featured many, many, many times on this channel. I got this about a year and a half ago. I got it in June of 2017 from um, the same person that sent me my childhood Packard Bell, the Legend 822, which we'll be looking at later a little, um, in a little bit. This um, computer is... Um, was is very very rare and I'm very very fortunate to have this um, in my vintage computer collection. This computer was manufactured um, November 13th 1996. It originally had I believe a 166 megahertz Pentium um, socket 7. This has the PB640 um, motherboard in it. Um, I'm not sure what um, how much RAM was in here originally. It currently has, I believe, 48 megs of EDO RAM. Um, it had, uh, I, again, I don't know um, what the hard drive was in originally. The problem with this computer is since it's so rare, I can't find any information on this, so I don't know what many of the original specs of this computer were, which is a shame. <laughs> um, we did do one major upgrade to this computer this past year, um, if you may recall. We upgraded this to a um, Pentium MMX Overdrive. Um, despite this computer having a Socket 7, um, the uh, compatibility for MMX chips is very, very um, sporadic. So the safest option was to go with an Overdrive chip, which um, was designed for computers like this in mind. And these um, CPUs are very, very hard to come across these days, but a good friend of mine um, here on YouTube was gracious enough to donate one to me to install into this computer, and it's running perfectly. Um, it's a 200 megahertz Pentium MMX overdrive, so this computer now has MMX instructions, which is really, really cool. Currently, this computer is running a 17-inch um, Packard Bell monitor, and it's running off of a um, 16 gigabyte SD card in place of a hard drive. I just wanted to get a closer shot of the computer itself. Again, um, I've done so many videos of this computer, um, including one where I took it apart. I think I did that for last year's Christmas. And I've even got a LGR sticker on there. And this is a... Um, 
Windows 95 lapel pin, which is something I bought this year. Uh, keep it right there um, as a uh, kind of a decoration. And it's got a um, CD-ROM drive right there. Um, unfortunately, um, the guy that sold this computer to me did not have the uh, drive rails for the 500 quarter inch bay, so it's being held in um, with a bunch of junk inside, with a bunch of papers and stuff. So yeah, it's not stable at all, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. And because it's impossible to find um, expansion card mounted um, SD card adapters now like you can with CF card adapters I had to take a very nasty approach to accomplish this I don't know if you can see it back there but the SD card adapter is just hanging out of the back there <laughs> but hey it's out of sight out of mind and who cares and um, I even have a SD card right here for running Windows 98 on, which we may take a look at. Um, but we're going to start off with good old-fashioned Windows 95, of course. Oh, and also I forgot to mention that this um, Packard Bell corner desktop is running this um, lovely-looking Microsoft Precision Pro joystick from the late 90s, and it's a really nice one. Okay, let's fire her up. takes a little while for it to post, so I'll um, probably just skip this part. Alright, we're finally going to boot into Windows. It's a little bit faster um, since it's running off of an SD card. Log on to the network as usual. Or not. <laughs> sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. There we go. And why isn't it why is there no sound? Oh, that would be because the volume was all the way down. <laughs> and sometimes this monitor loses its mind. So I have to adjust the vertical size there. There we go. Alright, let's uh, zoom into the monitor and get a better look, shall we? Okay, let's start off with a quick little MIDI test. This um, Packard Bell um, with it being the slightly newer software pack, um, it still has all the um, Legend 822 style software on here, but this gives the um, Packard Bell sound card that's in here the ability to have software wavetable that sounds really, really nice. So we can uh, take a little listen to that. First, let me check and see if it's um, set to use the software wavetable or not. And it is. Okay, um, I want to do a quick little test here. Um, I want to run DX Diag just to show um, 
some of the hardware specs. And, and it is showing that it's uh, Pentium MMX clocked at 200 megahertz um, once it decides to quit flickering the screen. <laughs> and we got 48 megs of RAM and we're running off of DirectX 8 which is the newest version that Windows 95 will handle. And our video card is a Cirrus Logic 5430, one of the most classic video cards you can think of. It has two megs of memory. Um, you see these Packard Bells, um, the motherboards, they would typically only give you one megabyte of memory, but they would, but there would be um, little uh, sockets in there to add more video memory. And this computer is one of the very rare ones that has those um, sockets occupied. So we have the full two megabytes of memory that's available. And we also have a 3DFX Voodoo 1 connected to this computer, which is really, really nice. Um, that was a very, very gracious donation from a good friend of mine here on YouTube this past year. And I am grateful for it every day. So, let's um, play a game. Since we couldn't play Lego Island on the Carolina Flyer, let's give it a try on this one. Yeah, and um, again, I got Namian Tools on here, which does run on Windows 95 with the right updates. A little bit of a slower system for this game, but it should handle it just fine. Hello. Oh yeah, that looks a million times better than the Carolina Flyer did. Aloha! How you doing? You! And in any language... And in any language, shut up! Huh. Where is the mouse cursor? And the keyboard's not registering. And the computer died! What? <laughs> Every single computer I've shown so far in this video has had some kind of problem. I. I can't explain why um, life has decided to um, slap me in the face all of a sudden. <laughs> so um, I guess there's some force out there that doesn't want me playing Lego Island today. <laughs> oh well. Okay, I tried Lego Island again and I was having similar problems. Thankfully it didn't crash the system that time, but again I guess um, we're just not meant to play Lego Island today. So we'll just go with an old classic instead. A little bit of Monster Truck Madness, one of my childhood favorites. I think the buffer needs to be adjusted on the uh, on the sound effects. There we go. Hardware acceleration since we've got a voodoo card. And we'll um, tell it to use our uh, lovely Precision Pro. And I always got to be Carolina Crusher, it's a tradition. You know what? I'm kind of in a beach mood for some reason. But I'm also in more of a um, Scottish mood. So let's play Highland Rally. Get ready! Go! Alright. Oh yeah, this is working just fine. Nice and smooth. 
You see, this is what happens um, when you combine a um, 200 megahertz MMX with a um, Voodoo One. You get good quality like this. And the guy that sent me the um, MMX overdrive for this computer also sent me a um, AMD. Um, I'll thank you not to overspeak. He also sent me an AMD K6 um, 2, I believe, 400 megahertz. That's um, socket 7, and while it will um, physically fit into the motherboard on this computer, it is so incompatible that if you put it in this motherboard, the motherboard will blow up on you and you can never use it again. But he sent it to me anyway, just in case I ever find a system that can use it. So that's um, a nice little bonus. Suddenly in the south. Well, not so suddenly, I live there. I may do a full review on this um, Precision Pro joystick sometime. Because it is a nice joystick. I always wanted one when I was a kid. When I, was a kid I never had the opportunity to have one. This may turn out to be my longest video ever, by the way. <laughs> it would not surprise me at all. And for those who have stuck, stuck around so far, I greatly appreciate it. And there's still more to come in this video. We've still got a few more vintage computers to look at. Scotland, there's a Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> I can't promise you this is going to work or not, but we're going to um, attempt to boot from this Windows 98 SD card. And the reason I'm not sure if it's going to work or not is because I was doing some weird stuff with it last week to troubleshoot that Raspberry Pi with, and it might not be bootable anymore. <laughs> Okay, it's actually working. <laughs> I didn't think it would. Um, we're not going to spend too long here because um, this video is running long enough as it is, but I just want to show this as a proof of concept. Windows 98 does run fairly well on here. Um, I wouldn't have even attempted this um, without the MMX instructions, but it runs okay on here. But to be fair, um, 90% of the time I use Windows 95 on here. It's just, it just seems more right. <laughs> All 
I don't think I ever finished installing stuff on here either. Yeah. But there you go, Windows 98 on the corner Packard Bell. I'll do a more proper video showing this off um, at sometime in 2019. I'm also considering getting another SD card to run Windows 3.1 on here just for the heck of it. So, um, yeah, we'll um, have some fun with that, hopefully, if I can get one. So, yeah, that's the Corner Packard Bell, one of my favorites. Okay, now it's time to check out a vintage laptop. This was another acquisition from this year. This is the Compaq Armada 7730MT. This is my main vintage gaming laptop. Got this, um, I believe, in April, I want to say. I, I paid um, way more than I should have for this. Um, the uh, picture they had on the eBay listing showed it running Windows 98, so that was enough for me to be convinced that it was a good purchase. Well, when I got it, um, the computer would like turn on for a couple of seconds and then just turn off. So that definitely wasn't a good sign. Um, and after some troubleshooting, I, um, I came to the conclusion that the motherboard was faulty. Now, thankfully, um, I went back on eBay and I found a Compaq Armada motherboard that was identical to this. So I purchased it, swapped out the motherboard, and it works perfectly now. So um, I think the motherboard was only like $15, so that was definitely a smart purchase there. And it turns out the reason the um, original motherboard was faulty, well, it looked like there was some corrosion on it from a drink spill at one point. so. That must be what was causing the problem, but computer works just fine now. Everyone's happy. Everything's peachy. Specs of this, it's got a, I think, a 150 megahertz um, MMX Pentium. Um, it originally had 60 megs of RAM, but I upgraded it to 80 megs. It had a um, 2 gig hard drive, but I upgraded that to a 2 gig CF card. And it had a floppy drive in here originally, but the floppy drive did not work at all. But thankfully, I was able to source a um, CD-ROM drive that fit just fine in here, um, even though it's not the right color. But it works. Um, I would love to find um, the right color CD-ROM for this and the um, floppy drive for this, because that would make putting stuff on here a little bit easier. But that's um, for the distant future, I suppose. So we'll take a tour of it. On the right side we've got um, a proprietary modem right here I believe and two PCMCIA slots. On top we have a, um, and both are occupied, we have a um, IBM 10100 Ethernet card. And on the bottom we have a um, PCMCIA um, CF card adapter with an 8 gigabyte compact flash card in here. This is where I keep all my um, game files on so I don't have to carry a bunch of CDs with me when I take this on the road. And on the back is where all our ports are. Okay, the modem's right there, so I don't know what that is. So there's the modem. We've got a serial port, a um, inf infrared port, a um, parallel printer port, microphone in, headphone out, and line in, a docking station connector, which by the way the um, docking stations for these um, laptops are really really awesome. It practically turns this into a full-fledged desktop with um, desktop style expansion slots. I would love to get one of those someday. Um, PS2 mouse and keyboard port, VGA out, and um, power connector. The power supply is connected in here, is um, built in, I mean, and which means all you need to power it up is just an ordinary um, power plug, just like this one, which makes finding um, power cords for this very simple. Right here, we've got a, um, I believe that's a fan and a battery and by the way the battery still works just fine on here despite it being 20 years old which makes portability very very nice on this 
So let's um, open the lid. And here's our keyboard. It's a pretty nice keyboard. Got a track point style mouse. There's a mouse buttons. Got some hotkeys right here. Two power switches because that's just how compact it is. And volume up and down. And a 800 by 600 active matrix screen, which unfortunately has really, really sorry hinges. Which kind of makes it difficult for me to play computer games in bed because I'll just be lying in bed and suddenly with one wrong move. <laughs> so, um, let me get the camera positioned properly and we'll power it up. Alright, here we go. Hopefully you'll be able to see the screen okay. I, it's really hard to position it with the way the hinges are. I need to try to find a, a new screen for this just so I can have better hinges, but I've checked and they're kind of hard to find since this is kind of an older laptop. Kind of an older laptop. It's 20 years old for crying out loud. <laughs> and I got Windows 95 running on here and scan disk has to run. And I'm going to tell it not to. And we can, um, and it has panel stretching, which is um, a must for a vintage gaming laptop. There's it initializing its cards. Unless there's a CD in the drive, there's um, no moving parts in this laptop since it runs off a CF card and has all its files on another CF card. So, no hard drive or anything in here. custom compact wallpaper okay um, where my cursor go oh. a little sluggish right now I guess it's still booting up I got 80 megs of RAM. Video card is made by S3. 800 by 600 screen. A Voice View 2800 modem. Our IBM network card. Unknown device. I'm not sure what it is. And ES1878 plug and play audio drive for sound. They made a lot of sound cards back in the day. And we know the drill by now. Let's head straight into a MIDI test for another Christmas Carol. Just need to find a good one. We're starting to run out. Sounds pretty good. I'm um, just basic sounding FM synthesis. And let's try out a game. Uh, let's see. Let's play a little SimCity 2000. It's a quick and simple one. Let's just go with a pre-made city. Let's try 
probably Catville. And it's the year 2052 and the city looks horribly run down. Oh, that sounds healthy. Okay, there we go. Let's try a different city. So whatever, Cape Wells. And it's the year 2072. I'll probably be dead by then. <laughs> Oh, good for you. Excuse me. Helicopter one, reporting heavy traffic. Not sure what to do exactly. <laughs> I know. Let's blow the place up. And there goes the wildlife reserve. In real life, though, um, tornadoes do scare the living crap out of me. I've never seen one in person, though, thankfully. But I hope I never do. Yeah, it's starting to get a little loud. <laughs> and the cool thing about this laptop is, um, among other um, compact laptops of the time, you get um, Real Mode DOS. When you double click this icon right here, it'll take you into a Real Mode DOS environment with um, perfect sound, a CD-ROM driver, everything you need, and all the memory you need as well. So let's check that out. I mean, it likes to freeze there, so I have to manually shut it down and turn it back on. Okay, we're booting into real mode DOS now. Loading the CD-ROM driver and the mouse driver, and here we are. So, um... go into our game directory and load us up a game. How's about Little Flying Tiger? And let's panel fit it. It's much better. So yeah, this makes a wonderful little um, portable DOS gaming computer. If you can find one of these laptops that works, I highly recommend grabbing one. I just, I just wish this one had better hinges. Got our multi.
the um, gun. simple game but a very fun one. By the way I'm dreading editing this video. It's probably going to take forever. <laughs> I still have other videos I need to make as well. Um, I'm actually making this video before um, Saturday, Sunday, and Christmas Eve's videos. of that. All right, um, that's pretty much um, most of the computers I have here in the um, office, so now what's left to do is we need to head into the bedroom and check out the computers I have set up in there, so stand by. Okay, before we um, head in the bedroom, I actually want to show a couple more computers. These are some computers that um, I still have that still work but I just don't have hooked up at the moment. This computer right here is a um, custom built computer I just made recently um, with some old parts lying around. This uses the motherboard that was originally in the Ultimate Packard Bell from earlier this year. It's a slot 1 micro ATX motherboard that can take a Pentium 2 or Pentium 3. It's currently got a 600 megahertz Pentium 3 in it. And it's got a Sound Blaster All 64 with a um, 3D Effects Voodoo 3 video card. And I believe 128 megs of RAM. And um, it's in this um, case that's a little too modern for it, but hey, it works. I'll probably move it into a smaller case though at some point. I intend to use this in the bedroom sometime as my main Windows 98 computer for the bedroom. But that'll be at a later date when I um, get around to it. It's the I.O. there on the back. And down here is my old friend, the Dell Dimension 2350, um, which is currently missing an optical drive and a power supply. I had to steal those out of this for other projects, but the computer, as far as I know, still works perfectly. It turned 15 years old this past summer. I did a whole video about that whole celebration. And I've had a lot of good times with that computer, and this is a computer that I'm going to keep for the rest of my life, um, no matter how difficult it may be. All right, let's head into the bedroom and see what computers are hooked up in there. Okay, next up on our list is the Packard Bell Legend 204 CD. This was a computer that I bought off of the same guy that gave me the um, iMac G3 back in February of this year. Sadly, this is the only Packard Bell I was able to acquire in 2018, so 
hopefully 2019 will be um, a little bit more prosperous when it comes to Packard Bell acquisitions. By the way, I apologize for the mess in here. <laughs> this um, computer is a um, 486 based system, um, clocked at um, 66 megahertz. It's a DX2. Um, has 8 megabytes of memory. Originally had a 400 and some megabyte hard drive, but that wasn't in there when I got it. And it originally had a two-speed CD-ROM drive, but as you saw in the last video we did about this computer, it decided to die on me. So now it has a brand spanking new CD-RW drive right here. Of course, it's um, not in here to burn CDs. It's just in here just to read CDs because it works, and it works well. And I got a nice little uh, monitor on top of it that matches. This computer was built in uh, March of 1995, making it the oldest Packard Bell I currently own. And, um, yeah, um, it works pretty well. It um, has a, uh, a new battery in it, a um, Tataram battery, which you saw me put in when I got it back in February. Um, this is, of course, the slowest computer I own, being a 486. There's no cache on it either, so it is pretty slow. <laughs> So, um, yeah, um, I guess the next thing we need to do is power it up. Okay, um, it's actually been a couple of weeks since I last powered this computer on, so hopefully it still works. has a 3 gig hard drive in it now, but I'm only using um, 2 gigabytes of it because MS-DOS limitations. And I'm having to use drive overlay to get this drive to work on this older computer. booting into MS-DOS 6.2. These Packer Bills never came with 6.22 for some reason. And we're booting into Windows for Work Groups 3.11. This is using the uh, Packard Bell install from uh, early 1995. So this is software that I didn't have on my A22 growing up. Love that Packard Bell wallpaper. And so far, this computer's working just fine. Um, I may have just jinxed it, though, but... <laughs> and here we are. First, let's um, load into um, Navigator, the much more archaic version that we're, than what we're used to. Welcome to the main menu of Navigator, the easy way to get to know and use your Packard Bell computer. Explore the functions of Navigator by using the mouse or the tab or arrow keys on your keyboard. And this um, version of Navigator is mostly button-based, but there are um, two versions of this. Um, there's one that has just the hallway here, and that would be Navigator 2.0. And this gives you access to the learning center, the workspace, kid space, and the software room. And as you can see, the software room and all the other rooms are just just takes you to button-based interfaces here. But this is version 2.1, which get which gives you this nice-looking um, study room, and that gives you access to your um, fax machine functions. Uh, your uh, audio features like this right here and um, <laughs> you can get a little Packard Bell monitor right here that, that takes you back to the 2D uh, menu so yeah um, and you get your Packard Bell virtual remote And this is running plug-in for Windows. 
All right, let's see if we have any uh, MIDI files on here that are Christmassy. I can't remember if I um, put any on here or not. And it looks like I did. Let's see. Always makes me think of um, Home Alone, the scenery setting up the traps toward the end. So um, let's fire up a game. See if we can find a good one here. Uh, something we preferably haven't seen in a while or or at all. Uh, let's, uh, I know we've, we've seen this game a lot, but, um, let's load up G Gus Goes to Cyberopolis, um, straight out of my childhood here. This is a light-on CDRW drive, by the way. Gus goes to Cyberopolis. Oh yeah, so many good memories here. Click, click here if you want to go to Cyberopolis. I love his voice, I always have. <laughs> Head to Gus's diner. Okay. Hope you have a fantastic time in the diner. Let's all go down to the diner. Wow. Table. Table. Yeah, um, as you can see, Gus is a cross dresser. But I'm not going to hold it against him. Um, it's uh, he, he does. He, he um, just do what you want to do. <laughs> hamburger, hamburger. I like how he says hamburger for some hamburger. reason. Hamburger, hamburger, hamburger. Okay, enough of that. Telephone, telephone, water pitcher. Money. A takeout order. 
Oh, there's Kid Vid from Burger King again, working at another at another restaurant. Oh yeah, this part of the game shows you like different cultures and stuff from other countries. That was America. And this is France. It gives you um, words in French. Let's head to another country. Alright, we're in Germany now. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Sounds gassy. Okay, obviously we're not going to go through the whole game, we'll be here all day. And this is already going to probably be the longest video of my YouTube career, so... <laughs> Let's uh, head back out to Windows. And get the heck out of here. And it was only a matter of time for this computer to not work. Every other computer's crashed on me today. Except for that compact. <laughs> I'm going to let this play for a minute. Just so you guys can make a remix out of this. Okay, that's good enough. Let's control alt delete this if we even can. Yeah, no telling. Oh, Windows 3.1. Doesn't take much for it to go up in flames. <laughs> so let's get our CD back out. Okay, let's go ahead and shut this on down and move on to bigger and better things. Just wanted to show this real quick. Um, this is the um, Toshiba Satellite 2505 CDS, the um, first laptop my family ever owned. I guess it still works, but it still has a um, faulty uh, power plug that needs to be re-soldered. Um, I have a friend of mine that's offered to do that, but I just haven't gone off, gotten off my butt to um, get it done. But it will be done eventually. This is a very historic laptop for me, so I do want to get it up and running again. So, anyway, on to something that I can actually power on. Okay, I've saved the best one for last. This is the very, very famous Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT. My childhood computer, the computer that got me into doing this kind of stuff, and yes, it still works beautifully. Um, we saw it just a couple of weeks ago for its um, 23rd anniversary video, and it's all decked out for Christmas, as you can see with its little uh, Santa hat over there on the monitor. Uh, this is a computer that, well, it just makes me happy. I just, it's, <laughs> I've done so many videos about this computer for the five and a half years I've had this. Um, as you know, the original Packard Bell was 
given away back in the year 2000, um, and it's pretty much gone for good now. Unfortunately, there's no getting it back. But this computer is identical in every way possible, and I'm so happy to have it. Um, the guy that sold me the quarter packer bill that we saw earlier, he, he donated this to me back in 2013 after he found it for sale on a forum. That is one of the most gracious things anyone has ever done for me in my life. As you know, I spent so many years trying to find another Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT, and thanks to him, it's now in my possession. And it has been for the last five and a half years, and it still runs beautifully. Um, as you know, the specs were um, originally 100 megahertz Pentium, which is still in there. 16 megs of RAM, which has been upgraded to 32 megs. It originally had a 1.2 gigabyte hard drive. Um, I never got it with this particular example, unfortunately, but it is running off of a 2 gigabyte compact flash card. And it's um, got a 52-speed uh, Sony CD-ROM drive in it. Um, I wish I could use the original CD-ROM that came with it, but unfortunately, um, it does not read CD-Rs. And I really need it to read CDRs, so yeah, I had to uh, break from uh, originality there, but it's just a CD-ROM, who cares? <laughs> and um, this isn't original to the um, system, but we've got the Packard Bell Fast Media Remote. And I even went as far as um, getting the original desk the original 822 sat on back in the 90s. I found this for sale at um, the Greensboro Valley Village back in 2016. Unfortunately, that store no longer exists. And I was able to bring it home and put it in its original home. And um, this part right here that came with the desk um, is actually the very original um, tower stand. My dad had, had kept it, thankfully. And um, I was able to get that back from him to go along with this setup. So everything is or as original as I can get it. And I am just, oh, it, it's just so nice. <laughs> but anyway, without further ado, let's uh, power it up. All right, here we go. One problem with this computer is, as nice as this original monitor is, it's in great exterior condition. It takes a very long time for it to warm up. So for the first few minutes, it's going to be pretty dim looking. But after a few minutes, it does brighten up to how it should look. And this is the only Windows 95 based computer that I have running off of um, Windows 95 RTM. Because one, it's original, and this is what I'm going for with this computer. Originality is in uh, kind of a time capsule. And RTM somehow runs just fine on here. And it usually doesn't on other computers. Let's skip the network for now. Ain't she a beaut? And this computer is, by the way, running off of the very original CMOS battery. It's soldered to the motherboard. It's a CR2032, but I've never had to replace it. It still works just fine. I. It's a miracle. Thankfully, if it does, when it, whenever it does die, um, the motherboard does have an external. Um, battery header so I can add um, an external one. So, let's go straight into Navigator, shall we? <laughs> this is the Navigator that I'm most familiar with. Welcome from Packard Bell. We offer you two computing environments to choose from, Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. Can you believe it's been over 10 years since I did my first computer-related video with a Packard Bell? It's hard to believe. So, um, uh, 
I've seen this so many times, it's sickening now. <laughs> There's our ski free. And Minesweeper, which I'm finally learning how to, to play, by the way. And no, I still can't win at it without cheating. And the info room. Okay, um, let's head back to the living room. And we'll do a MIDI test from Navigator's audio station. So let's... Uh, into the MIDI folder here. Here we go. back out and we're gonna play a game that we've seen quite a bit on this channel but you know what it's Christmas this is the original computer it was on we gotta play it putt putt joins the parade this is my original CD and the original case from when I was a kid so let's get started get the uh, Fatty Bear preview or not. Sometimes you get it on this game when you start it up. Nope, not today. <laughs> remember when, I, when we first got this computer back in December of 1995, I was actually disappointed that it had Windows 95 because um, I was, because uh, I fell in love with Windows 3.1 on my aunt's Gateway 2000, and I even tried to convince my dad to go to Montgomery Ward at Carolina Circle Mall and buy a copy of Windows 3.1 to install on here. I'm glad he didn't do it because I came to love Windows 95 and I still love it to oh, this day. And I have actually run Windows 3.1 on this on this particular 822 before. I actually have a um, CF card for Windows 3.1, but I bet you it's been like a year since I last used that card. Windows 95 is just more nostalgic for this computer it's time to brush. and just more proper. This coin will come in handy. I love how the Putt Putt universe um, has never had to suffer from inflation. <laughs> I 
guess we can um, mow one lawn in this game and then call it a day. I was gonna do this. <laughs> Shark! I wonder how I could get past that cow. Insult its mother. Or do that. Now I can keep on driving. Well, hello, Hot Pot. Here to sign up for the parade? Yes, sir, Smokey. We can skip that. Let's find out where we need to go mow lawns. Smokey said I should mow lawns on Red Street. Okay, we gotta go to the toy store and get a magnet, because that's where you go to get your magnets, the toy store. I need to find a balloon to take to the parade. Oh, I'm sorry, I just sold the last package to Mrs. Irving. Do you know where I can find her? She took her leave on Baby B to the drive-in movie. Thank you. And there's our magnet. So this is where I left my magnet. Head to Red Street, which, as you'll see, is literally red. Now I can cross Red Street. Smokey says there's lines to mow there. And this is why we need the magnet. The nails, they look dangerous. I think I have something to solve this problem. <laughs> sure about that? Salutations! Can I be of some help to you? I would like to mow your lawn. I would be pleased to have you mow my lawn for me. Now I can just mow the edges and that'll be enough, but I like doing the whole thing. It's some weird. Enough of that. Okay, um, let's wind this video up with um, one more DOS game. A Christmas one, for that matter. Didn't have this game growing up, but it's a good one still. Once I can find it, um, here's um, Jazz Jack Rabbit Holiday Hair 1995. A much friendlier game than Holiday Hair 98 that nearly um, cost me my sanity. And figure I'll joystick up. This was the first Jazz Jack Rabbit game I ever played, by the way, back in 2010. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, such a perfect platformer. And of course, I'm always a sucker for Christmas-related games like this. Huh. I never knew you could do that. We'll just do this level, by the way. I can get those weapons here. By the way, I'm having to do this from a very uncomfortable angle. As long as it works, though. I got some invincibility going for us now. Usually I play this with an invincibility cheat, but for you guys, I'm not going to cheat. Okay. can't go too fast in this game, you might get hurt. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> My back feels better now. Alright, let's head out of here. And let's head back out into the office and call this a video. First, let's shut down my childhood computer. Well, we did it. That was every single vintage computer I currently own. So, now we've come to the end of Nostalgia Mall Christmas 2018, as well as the end of 2018 itself. This year, the channel grew beyond my imagination. I, I just can't believe it. Um, as of this recording, we now have over 11,000 subscribers. I still remember when I first started this channel back in the 2000s. I thought it was impressive that I had four subscribers. It's... <laughs> Just shows you how far we've come. And New Year's Day this year will also mark one year since I debuted my new channel name, The Nostalgia Mall. I still remember feeling extremely nervous about how my fans and subscribers would react to all this. Um, because, you know, I've been, I was known for Road Geek for so long, and um, sometimes people freak out with this kind of stuff. But I was pleasantly surprised by the wonderful response it got. You know, this past year we explored old malls, traveled to, traveled to celebrate 10,000 subscribers. Remember when we went to um, Western Steer up out west um, in North Carolina? And, um, and we explored, of course, more computers than ever. And I plan to continue this trend into 2019, and I hope you guys stay tuned. It's hard to believe we've only got one year left in this decade. It's... Um, Still feels like yesterday when it was 2010. <laughs> anyway, I just want to say Merry Christmas to all of you. I hope it's the best Christmas you've all ever had. I don't know if there will be any more videos before New Year's, but do stay tuned otherwise for what I have planned. Again, Merry Christmas, everyone.
Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The links to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.